Hello, my name is Ray Ingray. I belong to Coastal Sydney. I live in the La Perouse Aboriginal community and I'm speaking to you in Darawal. I'm going to share with you a story that was told to me by senior women in my community when I was a little bit younger. And it's a story that they explained was told to them when they were children at La Perouse. The story relates to our dreaming and it explains to our people why certain animals look the way they do, how they came to our country and why certain features in our landscape exist the way they do. Our involvement in the Bondi to Manly Walk was at the request of John Faulkner who reached out to the La Perouse Local Aboriginal Land Council to ensure that visitors along that walk got a local authentic cultural experience and our community decided to promote the story of Buriburi throughout that walk. When you come and visit places within Sydney Harbour, we want you to look through an Aboriginal lens, through our lens. And remember, no matter where you stand, it's always had an Aboriginal presence here by our people. Our old people talked about a land to the distance east where some of our very old people used to live. In the far distant east we call Ngarawan and they were living there and it became no good as there was less animals for them to eat, less food sources for them to gather. And they knew that if they continued to live there that they will perish and die. Those old people knew that they had to leave that area and travel to the west across the sea. But they didn't have big enough vessels to make a safe journey. There was one vessel that was big enough and it was owned by Buripuri. But Buripuri was someone that didn't share. He was a big man with long hair and his barangar was big enough to make the safe journey for all the people. So the people decided that they needed to hatch a plan and steal Buripuri's barangar. One evening, they met with our Buripuri and they convinced Buripuri's only friend, Gunagan, that he needs to distract Buripuri while they take off in his barangar. So the next morning, Gunagan said to Buripuri, come over here and let me look for mullahs in your hair. And because Buripuri had long hair, the lice in his hair would make him quite itchy. And he decided that he would let Gunagan go through his hair. So he pulled his barang up onto the beach, tied it around a rock. So Buripuri let Gunagan go through his hair and Buripuri would sit up and look at his barangay and lay back down and sit up and lay back down until he got comfortable and he would ask Gunagan, is my barangay all right? And Gunagan would just grab, he grabbed two pieces of stick and he would tap it. And he'd say, yes, I'm tapping your barangay, can you hear it? And so the people got into the barangay real quietly as they untied it and pushed it slowly out to the water and they started rowing real quietly. And Buripuri kept asking Gunagan, is my barangay all right? And Gunagan kept tapping it saying, yes. Can you hear it? I'm tapping it. Just as the people were nearly out of sight, for some reason Buripuri jumped up and he seen that the people had stolen his barangay. And he got into a big rage because his friend Gunagan had deceived him. So Buripuri, being a big man, got into a fight with Gunagan and Gunagan didn't stand a chance because he was only a small fella. Gunagan grabbed one of those sticks and stabbed Buripuri in the top of the head. And Buripuri picked Gunagan up and slammed him onto the rock where he tied his barangay to and flattened Gunagan out and he fell into the shallow water. 
So Buripuri jumped in the water and started swimming after his barangay. And that stick dislodged and blood started pouring out the top of his head, but he didn't care, he just wanted his barangay back. And the people were rowing and Buripuri was swimming after him. The pursuit lasted for a couple of days and the people in the barangay started to get real tired from rowing. And a small stocky fella named Gowala, he said, let me row, I'll get us there. And he started rowing. And as he's rowing, he's saying to the people in the barangay, look for my big arms. I've got strong arms, I'll row us to where we're going. But as he started showing off like that, he started growing fur, funny ears and a black nose. But he kept rowing because he didn't want Buri Buri to catch him. As Gowala is rowing, Buri Buri kept swimming, but as he was swimming he was taking deep breaths and as he was going down he was getting deeper and deeper and as he would come up he would blow salt water from the top of his head where Gunagan made the hole. But he didn't care because he wanted to get his barangay back. As Buripuri was swimming he started to grow fins and a tail and every time he would go under he would get deeper and he would get more speed up in pursuit of his barangay. The next morning, the people in the vessel spotted land and Galu, who was a big tall skinny fella, he started to get excited and he was a dancer in the community. And as he was getting excited, he started to dance, but he started to grow feathers and a beak and funny legs and the talons made two holes in the barangay and water started to come up sinking them. So as they reached land, they pushed the barangay out a little bit and it turned upside down and turned into a gangman gang, which is known as Windang Island off Lake Illawarra. Gowala, who now is, as, as we know, the koala today, went to the nearest tree, climbed it crying sh and shamed by the way that he looked. He hugged that tree and went to sleep, exhausted from rowing for all those days. Galu went off into the bush and we see him now, he dances every time he gets excited still. Gunagan, poor fella, when he got flattened out he went into the shallow water and turned into what we know as a starfish and him and his descendants still remain in shallow water today. Buri Buri, him and his descendants still travel up and down the coast looking for their baranga. And our old people said that we know where Buripuri and his descendants have been because they think that they have spotted their barangay, they travel around it, making an island, realising it isn't their barangay, and they continue off in search for it. And so our old people told us that islands in Sydney Harbour and down in the south coast were made by Buripuri and his descendants looking for his barangay. Yaga, Barangajang, and the Mangai, Barangajang, and the Mangai, Barangajang.